we are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to the Nolan Hawkeye Anthony YouTube channel. And I thank all of you for being here, wherever you may be, and of course, however you may be listening. In today's video, I will, of course, be previewing Iowa versus Purdue. This game definitely has a lot of interesting storylines. You have two former Hawkeyes on uh, the Purdue Boilermakers. They transferred uh, to Purdue at different courses of the season last year or parts of the offseason, whatever you want to call it. Either way, uh, they were a Hawkeye. Now they are a Boilermaker. And you have that storyline. You also have the storylines of the Iowa offense, the contrasting styles of football between Purdue and Iowa, and just in general, uh, at, for Iowa fans, the continued just watching if the Iowa offense can improve is going to continue uh, until the end of the season, uh, seeing if Brian Ferentz can get it done. Most Iowa fans' opinions on Brian Ferentz I think are cemented at this point, uh, but it definitely will be something to watch. But before we get into any of that, I want to ask you guys to hit that subscribe button. It takes 1.25 seconds at the very least, like comment, share, you know, the drill. If you want to uh, support your boy and his coffee habit, you can hit the donation button uh, on the YouTube channel. And without further ado, let's get into this. Here is the, Team by team comparison on ESPN that I always do. Um, the football power index, ESPN football power index, gives Purdue a 69.2% chance of beating the Iowa Hawkeyes. Uh, Spencer Petrus, of course, probably had his best game of the year la or, uh, last week against Northwestern, but I think context matters. And I, in my post game video, Although I did give credit to the Iowa offense looking much improved, I cautioned fans from getting too uplifted by it because the reality is they did it against uh, a very, very stinky Northwestern team that has struggled all year long and who has a terrible, terrible defense. So you have to take it with a grain of salt. I, I also think in that same thought pattern you also have to take Iowa's losses to Ohio State and Michigan with a grain of salt maybe even Illinois um, because those are top tier teams certainly not Illinois but Michigan and Ohio State so it's just a balancing act either way the bottom line is there is a certain level that Iowa needs to perform at on the offensive end and I think most fans would just be okay with average that that really is all we are looking for. So the Iowa fans will definitely be looking for a, a you know a, a second consecutive week in a row of a solid offensive performance. Uh, like I said, Spencer Petrus had his best game against Northwestern, so he will be looking to duplicate that success against Purdue. Aiden O'Connell has uh, had a decent year so far. He has two thousand two hundred and seventy yards passing, fifteen tubs to eight INTs compared to Spencer Petrus, who only has 1,290 yards passing, three tubs to five INTs. Definitely uh, a difference there. I also, before I continue with the statistics for the top players on each team, I also want to point out that this is, I mean, each week, has its own uh, importance on each game. But there is a certain importance on this game for the Iowa Hawkeyes and, quite frankly, for Purdue because I think this game will determine the direction that both teams go for the season and what type of season they end up having. And I think if either team wins, they will be moving towards an eight, you know, or – yeah, an eight, maybe in Purdue's case, a nine win season. So this is, from that standpoint, a very, very important game. Uh, and, you know, 
I all the Iowa players, all the Purdue players definitely are aware of that fact. Believe me, uh, rushing yards. Caleb Johnson had a great game last week against Northwestern. Uh, I fully expect him to be the feature back for the Iowa Hawkeyes moving forward. Um, you know, he uh, he just brings something different to the Iowa Hawkeyes that they it's not that they don't have it, but. You know, because Gavin Williams and LaShawn Williams have their own physical traits that are really, really solid. But every now and again, you get a guy who really just kind of is a step further. And Caleb Johnson at six foot one, six two, you know, shredded like a greyhound, is fast, has great vision. I think that's kind of what separates him. He has the physical tools, but I think the vision that he has is a tad. Uh, superior at this point compared to Gavin and LaShawn. But either way, I'm liking the complementary of backs that Iowa is starting to build up with LaShawn, Gavin, and Caleb Johnson. Uh, he has 353 yards on the season. Uh, D. Uh, Maccabee has 561 yards, six TDs. Uh, receiving yards, Sam Laporta is the leading receiver for Iowa with 387 yards. Charlie Jones. 72 receptions, 840 yards, and nine TDs. Let me repeat that. Eight, 72 receptions, 840 yards, and nine touchdowns. Guys, I am not surprised in the least. When, when Charlie Jones transferred, I said uh, to, to Purdue, I said that this was going to be a massive loss. And I even said going way, way back that I thought that Charlie Jones, what last year I said, I thought Charlie Jones was the best or put together the best all around season for the Iowa Hawkeyes, you know, at the wide of all the wide receivers on the roster. He's fast. Uh, he's got legit four, three speed. He can help you in multiple phases of the game. And it's not surprising to me in the least that he is tearing it up at Purdue. Uh, so that will definitely be an in interesting thing to watch. I've also heard that he uh, has missed a few practices, so we'll see if he's able to go. Um, ho I, I hope he's able to go because I want Iowa to play Purdue at their best. Uh, and uh, so I, I hope he's able to go. Obviously, of course, Purdue also has Tyrone Tracy, who at one time was Iowa's leading receiver as well. Um, let's go ahead and click on that to see – uh, what type of season he's having, because to me, that is definitely very interesting. Let's go down here. Keep scrolling down. Dylan Downing has 249 yards rushing. Um, Tyrone Tracy has 47 yards rushing. Uh, receiving, Tyrone Tracy has 188 yards receiving. So, so not the greatest. Um, you know, very similar to what we saw out of him at Iowa. Um, so, you know, anyways, that is definitely uh, another interesting aspect to watch out for. Here are the that comparisons. Purdue averages 32.8 points per game compared to Iowa's measly 16.4 uh, points allowed per game. Iowa only gives up 15.8. Purdue gives up 25 and a half. Uh, total yards, 248.6 to 444.6. Yards passing, 155 to 314. Yards rushing, 93.5 to 130. Yards allowed, 265.6 to 353. Uh, passing yards allowed, 172 to 242. Rushing yards allowed, 93 to 110. Here are the last five games for each team. Uh, Purdue dropped one to Wisconsin. Wisconsin has looked okay uh, since losing uh, Paul Christ as their head coach, um, you know, that is certainly uh, something to pay attention to as well when it comes to the Big Ten West. Here are the standings uh, for the Big Ten. You know, it's it's Illinois out in front. Uh, I mean, Purdue's right behind them. That's why this game is going to be massive for them, uh, you know, because they want to continue to stay close with Illinois. Um, but But you really just have – you know, this bunch, Purdue, Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin, kind of all jockeying for position uh, right now. Um, and, you know, uh, these last couple games will definitely determine how this all shakes out. All right, guys, last but not least, 
I will be giving you guys my prediction for this game. Um, it, it's re- This game is really, really tough because I really do not have a firm handle on this Iowa Hawkeye team. Um, you know, part of me wants to lean into the performance we saw against Northwestern and believe that Iowa, you know, can uh, continue to improve offensively. But the more logical side of how I'm viewing this says, no, Iowa is the same old, same old. And, you know, now that they're playing against an actual decent team, this is going to be another below 20 point uh, game for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Um, Now, maybe the answer, and it's likely the answer, is somewhere in the middle. Iowa has not improved as much as the coaching staff would like us to believe offensively, but they're not going to be as bad as what we've seen in the past against, you know, really, really good defenses in Ohio State uh, and Michigan. The bottom line is Purdue, as always, their defense isn't terrible. It's probably middle of the road. Um, So I don't think Iowa will have... Uh, as tough a time with them as some of the other losses that Iowa has had. I do think Iowa showed some things that were uh, improved upon, especially the offensive line and the running game, which I like. Uh, If they have that, they are in good shape. Uh, I think this is a massive game for Purdue with a lot on the line, uh, and they will definitely be ready to go in this game to stay close in the big 10 West and stay atop of the big 10 West. Ultimately though, I think Iowa gets this win. They, they really take a step forward against Purdue. Uh, They, they, you know, go up against Charlie Jones, their former, you know, Tyrone Tracy, not that that matters a ton, but I think Iowa will be properly motivated for this game. Their defense and their special teams have been so consistent this year, and it will be no different uh, against Purdue. Yes. Purdue has given Iowa's defense fits in the past, but it cannot happen one once more. Can it? I don't think it will. Uh, I think Iowa ends up winning this game 27 uh, to 24. I think this is going to be a way closer game, of course, uh, than it needs to be 27, 24. Iowa wins this game. They don't get 27 points all from their offense. I think some of the points that Iowa will get will come from their defense. Uh, Obviously their special teams, Uh, and they end up winning this game, as I said, 27 to 24. But I fully, fully expect this game to be a close one. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. As you guys saw, I had some of the pro football focus grades in the background. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Be sure to like, comment, share. You know the drill. And last but not least, DBAP, don't be a pussy willow and facts or feelings because your feelings just don't matter. Love you guys. Go Hawks. Bye-bye.